on Panorama, undercover in a care home, desperately short of staff. And again, 52 residents Sure, stop, sure, stop, all the time. Workers recruited from overseas under pressure. They say they're being exploited. He said, if you don't want to stay here on the contract, you can go back to India. I didn't have any choice. We reveal how residents are being put at risk. Staff recognized that care wasn't always adequate and things happened that they weren't happy about. And investigate a care home boss who says he's willing to look the other way if things go wrong. You think we don't make mistakes? We will always protect our staff. This protection isn't allowed outside. Oh my God, he's almost justifying. If you make mistakes, we're gonna cover it up. I'm actually in disbelief, to be honest. I'm a bit shocked. My name is Balakrishnan Balagopal. I came to the UK from India 23 years ago. This country has been good to me. I got married, became a British citizen and raised my children here. But the experience of many Indians arriving today is very different. Some community members who work in social care, tell me that they ended up being exploited. So I'm going undercover to investigate. Good afternoon, Adam. Can I help? Hi, I called you earlier in regards to a job. I get a job as a care assistant at Addison Court near Newcastle. It's one of 15 care homes in the northeast of England, owned by Preswick Care part of the Malhotra group. I'll be doing 12-hour shifts for minimum wage, just over 10 pounds an hour. Thank you. All right, sign in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Balu. More than 50 residents live at Addison Court. Their weekly fees average 1,100 pounds and can be paid for by the local authority. NHS or the resident's family. There are no rules about how many staff a care home needs, but right from the start, I hear about a shortage of nurses. When they, when they booked me, they told me it was two nurses, and I came 52 residents from Abisa. So how many should be there? Normally, how many? The top two floors are home to 38 residents who need nursing care. So you, you were doing two floors? Yes. Katie Morn is an NHS nurse. Until last year, she visited patients at Addison Court once a week. There was a few occasions when I would be in Addison and I could clearly see that the nurse on duty was upset that they, they didn't want to work within the care home anymore, but they were unable to leave. They seemed to be sort of tied in. It was almost like they were slaves to the company, that they couldn't get out of it. Now, a year later, I was seeing the same. One of the staff nurses is finding it hard to cope. When I see her shortly afterwards, she is visibly upset. I catch up with her again at the end of her shift. Nurses are on the government's skilled worker list. Her visa to work here is sponsored by Presbyterian Care. If she wants to leave the company, she has to find another employer to sponsor her. Otherwise, she will have to leave the UK.
എനിക്ക് വിസ കിട്ടിയെങ്കിൽ മാത്രല്ലേ പോവാൻ പറ്റുള്ളൂ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ എനിക്ക് നമ്മൾക്ക് ഇറങ്ങി പോവാനില്ല Across the NHS and social care in England, the government says 42,000 more nurses are needed. We had Brexit, then we had Covid and we saw vast numbers leave the care sector, mainly Europeans, and they never returned. The response was to add a large number of people within the social care sector to the skilled worker visa scheme. Last year, around 140,000 visas were issued for health and care workers. more than double the previous year 39000 were issued to people from india i speak to a nurse who worked at atison court to find out more about why some nurses there may feel trapped i was working as a nurse back home then i thought like why shouldn't i go to an english speaking country earn more and will have better standards of life armad not his real name came to the uk from india in 2018 it was a nice experience i would say like i came over i was picked up by one of the employees from the prestwick they took me to addison court the government says employers shouldn't pass on recruitment costs they have incurred to overseas staff but in armad's case that's what prestwick ceo banti malhotra did a new contract which said if i leave the company within 5 years i have to pay a whole amount of money the government only allows employers to recoup the cost of visas travel and accommodation but armad's contract shows if he left he'd owe more than 4000 pounds including home office and legal fees which should be paid by prestwick care bunty said If you don't want to stay here on the contract you can go back to India. I didn't have any choice. I'm not going to leave because I can't pay that much money. After a week at Addison Court I have been put on my first night shift. You see it's short stop short stop short stop all the time. This is the only nurse on duty tonight. He's from an agency. Prestwick says During night shifts, one nurse is ample for 54 residents when supported by a team of carers, including some who can administer medication. So you're just on your own today for the whole. Yeah. So you have to give medicine to how many? It's not only medication because you start if you start to give medication, somebody ask you something, the resident call you, uh, and you lost the the time. What time are you supposed to give medication? Bed time, eight o'clock. No delay, one o'clock. Oh, it's eleven o'clock now, yeah. isn't it? And they are all sleeping. Almost to do. Administering drugs late can have serious consequences. This GP had patients in Addison Court in 2022. She's asked to be anonymous because she's worried about future employment. that did seem to be a trend with certain medications and certain patients not getting their medication in a timely fashion parkinson's medication that's very important to be administered on time and also patients who are on insulin who never got their insulin prescribed with the time critical medications if you don't get them on time it's going to affect your speech it's going to affect your mobility you could fall on the floor while trying to get to the toilet so it can be really detrimental to that patient they certainly will have an increased risk of falling that happened on several occasions the agency nurse covering the night shift says he raised short staffing at prestwick care with ceo banti malhotra when he was working at another of their homes i said it's impossible to to manage last night i work in the building with three floors mm. how come to manage okay if somebody uh, has fall it's emergency to yeah the residents yeah. at the same time how yeah yeah so what did he say hey, if you don't know with your care homes oh get out okay i don't want to see your your face and he, oh, he told you yeah yeah 
Mm. He likes the money. Mm. For you, for him, the care homes is the business. Presswick Care says Bhanti Malhotra doesn't recall the conversation and says the allegation isn't correct. One of the first things that struck me was just how profitable this group is. Vivek Koteja is a chartered accountant. He's looked at the accounts for Presswick Care's parent company, Malhotra Care Homes Limited. Last year, it made £9.3 million profit. Over the past two years, 2021, 2022, they've been making about 40% profit margins, which is very high. They seem to spend less of their income on staff than a fair number of their competitors. And that's kind of worrying because these kind of patients need attention, otherwise they're at risk of falls or injuries. I had to put in 33 safe gardens. That's far too many. <laughs> In the two years Katie Mon was visiting Addison, she was so worried about some residents, she made what are called safeguarding alerts to the local authority. Lots of unexplained bruising of patients, lots of injuries. One of those safeguarding alerts was for unexplained bruising on 79-year-old Joy's bird. Aesthetically, Addison Court was beautiful, but the care wasn't. Joyce had Alzheimer's. She moved into Addison Court in 2020. The £1,242 per week cost of her care was paid by the NHS and local authority. On the Sunday night, I got a call from one of the nurses to say that she had noticed fingertip bruising on my mum's arm that needed to be looked into. Tracy rang the home's manager. She eventually rang me back to say that she'd been up, checked my mother, everything was fine. There was nothing for me to worry about. Until I got the call on the Thursday morning from Katie to say, was I aware that she was going to report this to Safe Garden? Then Katie says she saw what she thought could have been causing the bruises. I could, probably could have counted at least 10 times the carer pushing down on the shoulder to push her back into the seat, sit down. Gateshead Council received the safeguarding alert. Its investigation into the cause of Mrs. Bird's unexplained bruising was inconclusive. But that wasn't all. Katie also raised concerns about a resident who she says had been left for 72 hours with severe constipation. She was lying in bed with a severely distended abdomen, writhing all over the bed, crying for her mom. So yeah, I knew straight away as soon as I seen her, she was, um, I knew she was going to die. It was constipation. They should be speaking to the GP and saying, look, we still haven't had a bowel motion and they should be getting medical advice. It's 100% neglect, yeah. Gateshead Council says it's unable to share the outcomes of the safeguarding concerns identified because it would involve releasing highly sensitive personal information. It says each case reported was responded to and managed in the best interests of the residents based on the evidence provided at the time. Back at Addison Court, I speak to colleagues about their concerns over staffing levels on night shifts. <laughs> What the senior carer told me is that they have raised this issue with the management several times. However, they are not interested. There is nothing much being done about it. That is not right, to be honest. Staff recognise that care wasn't always adequate and things happened that they weren't happy about. But they felt that there was no point bringing those concerns to the manager because she would either somehow make it their fault or just try and sweep it under the carpet and they would end up in tears and in trouble. Sometimes I felt that they were potentially not escalating certain concerns because it was over there that they could just be deported back. Um, they didn't want to upset the the company, but 
How can you, how can you do your job if you've got that over your head that you're worried? Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to speak to you. Okay, go on. She's rushed off her feet too, but I managed to speak to the home's manager about understaffing. Just trying to bring it up to your notice. I know. Yeah. Because they've never told me the overstretch and the miseducation. Staff shortage is not enough nurses and then... There isn't enough nurses and I've raised that to see management. Mm. Like today there should be two nurses. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. And seeing, seeing if people are aware of that. National yeah. shortage, it's, just not, it's not just here, it's the NHS. The home manager says it's completely untrue she fails to investigate complaints and that she has positive relationships with staff at the home. Since 2022, alongside nurses, carers have been added to the government skilled workers list and must be sponsored to get a visa. Nine of the Indian carers I meet at Addison Court say they paid between six and 10,000 pounds to a recruitment agency called BGM Consultancy. BGM, which is based in Aldershot, is run by this man, Sunil Thomas. The government says employers should only work with agencies that don't charge fees. The Home Office charges £551 for a five-year visa. But this carer says she paid BGM more than 9000 <laughs> Unscrupulous agents, they are doing the recruiting in countries such as India, Kenya, where they are charging thousands of pounds for the visa. And so people come here uh, with thousands of pounds of debt and then are tied into a particular care provider through the visa scheme. And then we are seeing examples of those people uh, being exploited. Prasvik Care says it's now suspended all new arrangements with BGM consultancy. BGM director Sunil Thomas says he hasn't taken any funds towards recruitment of care workers to the UK and that any money paid would have been to sub-agents acting without his knowledge in India. The carer who says she paid BGM thousands is also facing a demand for money from Presswick Care. She now wants to leave and has been told she might have to pay the company's legal and administrative fees. Costs the government says should be paid by Presswick Care. <laughs> Nurse Ahmed says the money Presswick Care wanted from him felt like a way to prevent him leaving. But he resigned anyway. After I left, other staff members also felt that they could leave. The nurses who felt they were trapped in such a five-year contract could feel better that like, oh, they have other choices. Preswick Care started legal action against Ahmed to recover the fees. It said he now owed more than £5,000. Ahmed decided to call CEO Banti Malhotra and secretly recorded the call. There was something else in Ahmed's contract, a clause more suited to high-flying executives. Bhante Malhotra was trying to stop the nurse from working for any competitor care home for six months. You're not allowed to work around the corner. We haven't pursued you for that yet. If I started litigating with you, there'll be no limit to it. The idea that these sorts of provisions are being used across a contract for senior care assistants and nurses um, seems to be absolutely ludicrous from a legal perspective. Those clauses are there to serve a purpose of contributing to making that individual feel trapped in their situation. They would not be upheld um, by, um, by a tribunal or by a court. Presswick Care denies its contracts are designed to intimidate and says it's now reviewing all repayment clauses in them. 
Back at Addison Court, an important part of Akero's role is preventing and responding to falls. If a resident has a fall and is unable to get up by themselves, a hoy should usually be used. We are all trained to use them, but they take time and corners can be cut. While I'm undercover, I see four residents being lifted off the floor in what's known as a drag lift. According to Addison Court's own moving and handling policy, drag lifts should never be used. We showed the footage to Sarah Thornton, an expert in how to move and handle people safely. That is a classic drag lift. The drag lift is a high risk technique. The hold is under their arms. The uh, person's body weight will pass through the shoulder joint. If the loading exceeded the tolerance levels of the shoulder joint, it would result in injury, such as shoulder dislocation or upper arm fracture. Addison Court's faults prevention and management policy says, if a resident falls and shows signs of a fracture, they shouldn't be moved and a doctor or paramedic called. But I hear about one fall where the safety protocol doesn't appear to have been followed. Two carers had gone to help a resident with Parkinson's who'd had a fall. Instead of using a hoist, they hauled him up. And they basically picked him up, put him on the chair, yeah. didn't waste him at anything. Shouldn't have been picked up before. The next day, the resident's condition deteriorated. Well, they couldn't get him up, they couldn't get him off the bed, oh. so they ran for the ambulance to come out. It turns out he had a serious injury. When was it picked up that he had fracture? They took him in on Saturday, they had an operator on his head. In that bunch of injured on the it was an absolute shadow. That wasn't the first time an ambulance had been called. I'm told paramedics saw the resident on the day he fell, but were told he'd managed to get up by himself. So they didn't take him to hospital then, even though the home's own documents record he was in pain. When the people went for the paramedics, they said that he got himself off the floor, and he didn't. You know what I mean? Because they didn't find him? No. He couldn't have. So that's possibly why the paramedics haven't took him. The resident spent three weeks in hospital, recovering from a broken hip. Trustvic Care says there is no evidence the paramedics were told the resident got up by himself and the decision not to take him to hospital was based on a thorough physical examination. It says information has since come to light that he may have been lifted to a chair, but this lift was not recorded. It says two staff members who moved the resident have been suspended pending investigation. The resident eventually returned to Addison Court but had another fall six weeks later. This time, his post-fall care followed guidelines. But he still ended up back in hospital. Once you've had one fall, you're likely to have another. If the patient's injured, if they fracture their hip or they fracture an arm or a leg and they end up going to hospital, they can end up with uh, lifelong consequences and life-limiting consequences. Tracy's mother, Joyce Bird, whose bruising had been reported to the local authority, was supposed to get one-to-one -one care from 8 in the morning until 10 at night. But that didn't always happen. The social worker would always say to me, your mum should never have a single bruise on her. No matter what medication she's given, because she has one-to-one -one care. So my thoughts were that there were numerous times that she had been left unattended and that's why she was falling as much as she did. Tracy's mother died at Addison Court in May this year. Her post-mortem examination said she should have been on one-to-one -one care, but that was not the case this morning. Joyce died alone. It's really upsetting because, for me, families think the loved one's going to 24-hour care because they get round-the-clock care and they're getting looked after. And that's not what I witnessed. In December last year, 
Creswick Care had its license to sponsor overseas workers suspended by the Home Office. The CEO, Bonti Malhotra, calls a meeting to update staff. I'm Bonti. I'm CEO of this group. So you work for me. Only Indian employees have been asked to attend. Bhante Malhotra says he doesn't want them to leave. It's all about his bottom line. Loyalty is two-way. I'm thinking if I lose you, what is Mr. White, Mrs. White going to cost me? All nurses working in the UK must be registered with the Nursing and Midwifery Council, the NMC. Their professional registration is known as a PIN. And if you work for an English company, if you work for NHS, one mistake, report it to NMC straight away. In here, in 37 years, touch wood, not single nurse has lost pin. Not one. You think you don't make mistakes? You don't make mistakes? You don't make mistakes? But we will always protect our staff. We always say, our nurse, this mistake is a training issue. My staff is always guided to say, these are our children, they are loyal staff, they are good girls, they are caring girls. None of them are coming drunk at work. We protect. This protection isn't allowed outside. Oh my God, he's almost justifying that if you make mistakes, we're going to cover it up. And almost scaring them that they should never leave his care home. They'd get reported to the NMC if they work for the NHS. Like, I'm actually in disbelief, to be honest. I'm a bit shocked. After eight weeks undercover, I leave Addison Court and make my own safeguarding alert to Gateshead Council. Many of the staff I work with were doing their best in difficult circumstances. The Home Office has now fully revoked Presswick Care's license to sponsor overseas staff and the regulator, the Care Quality Commission, has suspended Addison Court's good rating. If you are in a position of power as a boss, you can exert a coercive control over an individual. And it happens because that individual is vulnerable, because they're loaded with debt, because they're told that they can only work for that service provider. Unscrupulous bosses use that as a means to control. Preswick Care says any suggestion that there is systematic wrongdoing or bad practice would be unfair and inaccurate. The safety and well-being of residents and staff remains paramount. It says it's fully committed to thoroughly investigating all concerns raised and taking appropriate actions as necessary. They say you can tell a lot about a society by the way it looks after its elderly. How it looks after those who care for its elderly is also important. As the UK increasingly relies on carers from overseas, those who look after our loved ones should be able to do their jobs free from exploitation.